First up, we have Elton John. According to the Unmasked Slay Liberty social network, Elton John, the legendary music icon, has grown tired of being nice to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and you may be wondering why. In his autobiography, Prince Harry reveals he fell out with Elton during a holiday in France before he decided to step down as a senior royal. Elton, a close friend of Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, famously performed Candle in the Wind at her funeral. However, Elton's refusal to sing the song on the anniversary of Diana's passing created tension between him and Harry. In his book, Harry shares details of a clash they had during their stay at Elton's house in France in 2019. The Duke mentions a disagreement over Elton's memoir being serialized in the Daily Mail. But rumor has it that Elton's private plane has recording devices placed all around it, and one time when Harry and Meghan borrowed it, they made some less than complimentary remarks about their very generous friend. When he heard what they said, he was not pleased. Next up, Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow, along with Elton John, did not hold back her disdain for Meghan Markle. Cheryl Crow, who was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, took the stage that night to perform some of her hits, including Soak Up the Sun, but not before she addressed the audience and said, This one goes out to Meghan Markle, who I'm sure is soaking up the sun in California while the rest of us are freezing our butts off in New York. She then continued on to say, You know, I used to admire her. I thought she was a strong and independent woman who stood up for what she believed in. But then she turned out to be a selfish and manipulative liar who betrayed her family, her country, and her fans. She's nothing but a fame-hungry opportunist who doesn't care about anyone but herself. So Megan, if you're watching this, I hope you enjoy your son because you've burned bridges and you will never be welcomed here again. Yikes. Number eight, Chris Rock. One celebrity you probably didn't think would be on this bingo card for bashing Meghan Markle is actor and comedian Chris Rock. He came under fire after mocking Meghan's claims of experiencing racism within the royal family. The former Suits star revealed in her famous interview with Oprah Winfrey that certain unnamed members of the royal household were concerned about how dark-skinned Archie, her then unborn first child with Prince Harry, was going to be. Chris Rock wasn't amused by this statement and incorporated his response into a bit for his live stand-up comedy special, Chris Rock Selective Outrage. According to Insider, he saw things from an entirely different perspective than Meghan. That's not racist because even black people want to know how brown the baby is going to be. Rock quipped to laughter from the audience. Moreover, he disagreed with the notion that Meghan was ever a victim, claiming everybody is trying to be a victim. He continued, Meghan Markle seems like a nice lady, just complaining. I was like, didn't she hit the light skin lottery? The comedian also maintained that the Duchess knew what she was getting into when she married into the firm, dubbing the family the original racists. Number seven, Katie Hopkins. Some of the nastiest commentaries about Meghan Markle came from British media personality and controversial commentator Katie Hopkins. She has made several unpleasant statements over the years, so much so that she was permanently banned from Twitter for hateful conduct. For what seemed like the longest time, the far-right activist's favorite subject of torture was Meghan. She thrived off mocking and bullying the Duchess, even going as far as spoofing one of her interviews by dressing up as her. The Mirror reported that Katie Hopkins appeared in an interview for a Channel 9 documentary about Meghan and called the Duchess of Sussex the biggest hypocrite there is and accused her of not being fashionable and complained about her beauty in an almost laughable way. There she is in her one shoulder dress being glowing, the commentator sarcastically said, because all she does is glow, abdicate, off you go. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced their step back from their senior positions in the royal family, Katie slammed the Duchess in a video saying, they enjoyed their fabulous wedding where Markle got to be the center of all attention. This is classic Meghan Markle and something that many of us would said would happen all along. We could see trouble coming a mile off. 
This woman has always been desperate to be a celebrity. Number six, Kelly Rowland. Among the shady celebrities listed, Kelly Rowland appears somewhat out of place. However, it turns out that she unintentionally threw shade at Meghan Markle due to a humorous misunderstanding. In an interview with Hello! magazine in October 2023, Kelly shared her excitement about meeting Meghan for the first time on September 4th at Beyonce's Renaissance Tour concert in Los Angeles. Kelly expressed that Meghan felt cool, down to earth, and warm. Interestingly though, it was later discovered that the two had actually met before in 2014, as revealed by a now deleted post from Meghan Markle's old lifestyle blog, The Tig. The pair took a photo during New York Fashion Week that year, adding a touch of awkwardness to the situation. Nevertheless, it seems like a genuine mistake, and Kelly Rowland continued to praise Meghan, acknowledging her regal nature even before joining the royal family. Number 5. Howard Stern Like others on this list, the radio host doesn't understand the former Duke and Duchess. Stern, known for speaking his mind, shared his unsavory thoughts on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's Netflix docuseries, Harry and Meghan. He criticized their attention-seeking behavior despite claiming to desire privacy. Howard Stern also predicted the outcome of their marriage, suggesting that the prince may eventually grow tired of Meghan. It's just weird to see two people who keep screaming, we wanted our privacy, we wanted the press to leave us alone, and then what is their special that they put on Netflix, showing you them and their kids and their life? It's like the Kardashians, except boring. Number four, Simi Garwal. Talk show host and actress Simi Garwal also commented on Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's interview with Oprah Winfrey. Simi Garwal expressed her disapproval of Meghan, referring to her as evil and accusing her of lying and playing the race card for sympathy. She later retracted the word evil and replaced it with calculating. However, she maintained her overall dislike of Markle, citing her lack of respect for women who break up homes. Simi Garwell shared a Daily Mail article featuring images of Markle as a young girl in front of Buckingham Palace and present-day Markle with her prince, suggesting that Meghan had planned to marry into the royal family from the beginning and knew exactly what she was getting into. Next up, Aaron Foster. Aaron Foster is a comedy performer and writer who has a notorious history of blasting several celebrities on Instagram, including Megan. In November 2017, Aaron posted a photo of Megan from Deal or No Deal Days and captioned it, Never Forget. On another occasion, she posted another image of Megan holding a briefcase from the same show and added an even more rude caption that read, This briefcase is filled with my plans to be famous. It is no secret that Erin considers the Duchess to be nothing but a fame-hungry social climber. Number 2. Chrissy Swan Chrissy Swan, the Australian TV personality, has always been keen on critiquing Meghan Markle. She first opened up about her judgment on her personal Facebook page, which stated that Chrissy could never warm up to Meghan as she was under the impression that Meghan was just acting her part, that the humility shown by her was concocted and performed by her. Chrissy's Facebook page then turned into an open field of judgments as hundreds of fans expressed their agreement with Chrissy Swan. And last but not least, we can never forget her ex-husband, Trevor Angleson. Meghan's ex-husband and producer, Trevor Angleson, mostly kept mute about his feelings towards his royal ex-wife. However, royal biographer Andrew Morton didn't feel the need to reciprocate this behavior and released a book on Meghan called Meghan, a Hollywood Princess, which portrays Trevor's alleged dislike for his ex-wife. According to the book, Trevor was initially elated being married to Meghan, but he soon started feeling like dirt under her shoe. Meghan allegedly mailed her wedding ring back to Trevor out of the blue after two years of marriage. First up, the interview that started it all. The first sign of a strained relationship between Oprah and Meghan was when the Duchess agreed to do an explosive tell-all interview with her and Prince Harry. While many viewed it as a bold move for the couple to open up about their struggles within the royal family, 
Others saw it as a betrayal to Queen Elizabeth and the rest of the institution. Oprah was accused of exploiting Meghan and Harry's personal issues for ratings and profit, leading to a public feud between her and several members of the British media. Number 9. The Sussex's Decision to Step Back from Royal Duties According to insiders, Oprah was initially a cheerleader for Meghan and Harry's quest for independence and privacy. She applauded their bravery in breaking the mold and forging their own path. However, as the plan unfolded, differences in opinions surfaced. Oprah, known for her tireless work ethic and devotion to her own responsibilities, began to question their choice to distance themselves from royal obligations. The Oprah couple conflict heated up when it became clear that Meghan and Harry's decision strained the relationship with the royal family. Oprah, having faced her fair share of public scrutiny and backlash, couldn't help but worry about the potential fallout and long-term consequences for everyone involved. Next up, money sins of the past. There have been ongoing rumors circulating about a past financial dispute between Oprah and Duchess Meghan. According to certain sources, it is alleged that Meghan had borrowed a significant sum of money from Oprah in the past, but unfortunately there are claims that she never repaid the debt. This supposed situation has apparently put a strain on their relationship. This supposed situation has apparently put a strain on their relationship. Number 7, weight loss scam allegations. As we all know, Oprah has been the face of one of the biggest weight loss companies in the world. But in 2019, Oprah found herself in some hot water when it was revealed that she had invested $43 million in a weight loss scam involving none other than Meghan's half-sister, Samantha Markle. While Oprah has denied any involvement or knowledge of the scam, one can't help but wonder if it stirred up some spicy tension between her and Meghan. Number 6. The Intention Behind the Oprah Interview The Oprah interview had a lot of mixed feelings behind it and it made everybody collectively look bad. All three had their own agenda for wanting it to go viral, so all the triggers, race, and mental health had to be pressed. Oprah was no longer the star she was, and Meghan and Harry wanted to be catapulted into the A-list category. Trashing Harry's family would hit the headlines for sure. Their version was accepted as fact with no challenge, no difficult questions, just encouragement to pile it on. No acknowledgement of their inconsistencies and no question as to why Harry had such a difficult relationship with his father Charles and why they were no longer funding millions to Harry and Meghan. Number 5. The Strained Relationship with King Charles Meghan has been open about her strained relationship with her father-in-law, King Charles. Oprah has been a part of many celebrations involving Queen Elizabeth and other members of the royal family. Interviewing Meghan and Harry may have caused tension between Oprah and the royal family as she had a close relationship with Charles' ex-wife, Princess Diana, and now current wife, Camilla Parker Bowles. Oprah may have felt torn between her loyalty to the family and her friendship with Meghan, leading to a strained relationship between the two women. Next up, the criticism from none other than Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, a British media personality and former friend of Oprah's, has been highly critical of both Meghan and Oprah since the controversial interview aired. He accused Oprah of being self-serving and claimed that she was using Meghan to boost her own fame and fortune. Number 2. The Influence on Society As one of the most influential figures in media, Oprah carries a lot of weight and influence on society. Some may view Meghan and Harry's decision to step down as senior royals and speak out against the royal family as a challenge to traditional institutions. Oprah may have seen this as a threat to her own influence and legacy, causing her to resent Meghan for potentially jeopardizing her reputation and power. Last but not least, at number one, the betrayal of trust. Throughout their friendship, Oprah and Meghan have reportedly grown close and developed a strong bond. So when Meghan decided to do the Netflix docuseries interview with 
without giving Oprah a heads up, it may have felt like a personal betrayal. So when Meghan decided to do the Netflix docuseries without giving Oprah a heads up, it may have felt like a personal betrayal. Oprah is known for valuing trust and loyalty above all else, so this breach of trust could have dealt a significant blow to their relationship. Oprah is known for valuing trust and loyalty above all else, so this breach of trust could have dealt a significant blow to their relationship. Oprah is known for valuing trust and loyalty above all else, so this breach of trust could have dealt a significant blow to their relationship. First up, Donald Trump. Donald Trump really let us know what he thought of Meghan Markle calling her disrespectful to Queen Elizabeth, even declaring he was not a fan of hers. Trump added, I'm not a fan of hers, I wasn't from day one. I think Harry has been used terribly and I think someday he will regret it. He continued to say, I think Harry's been used and has been used terribly. I think he's ruined his relationship with his family and it hurts the queen. He also accused her of crossing a line by getting involved in US politics when she recently asked members of Congress to include funding for paid leave in President Joe Biden's social spending bill. She is trying to do things that I think are very inappropriate, said Trump. Next up, Wendy Williams. The former daytime talk show host told her viewers that Meghan will regret cutting off her dad, Thomas Markle, from seeing his two grandchildren. Wendy supported Thomas when she spoke to the press, claiming, I'm Team Thomas on this particular thing. He's an old man and he's apparently not well. He goes in and out of swollen ankles and he doesn't look spry at 76. He's got two grandchildren that he's never met. Megan does not have to accept him all the way in her family, but maybe a little hideout one day in Malibu and invite him over with no press involved. It was clear from her words that Wendy Williams wanted to help Thomas find a way back into Megan's life, and she hoped that the former actress would listen to her plea. Even though her words could be interpreted as shade, Wendy Williams does throw shade for a living, so this is polite coming from her. Number eight, Bethany Frankel. The Real Housewives of New York star Bethany Frankel weighed in on the drama surrounding Meghan Markle. In response to a Twitter user who suggested that Meghan had been treated unfairly by the palace and press in the aftermath of her now infamous tell-all interview with Oprah Winfrey, Bethany Frankel had a biting retort. Her tweet said, cry me a river. The plight of being a game show host, fairly unknown actress to suffering in a palace with tiaras and seven figure weddings for two whole years to being a household name, Frankel went to suggest that Megan's recent behavior was not necessarily an effort to keep out of the public eye, but rather an attempt to maintain her celebrity status. This isn't the way to generate less press and cannot be filed under the guise of wanting privacy to prevent a repeat of previous events, she wrote alluding to Princess Diana's tragic story. She seemed to suggest that Meghan Markle was more interested in maintaining her celebrity than she was concerned about protecting her privacy and peace. Number seven, Meghan Kelly. The political commenter and talk show host Megan Kelly showed no remorse or mercy when discussing the Oprah Winfrey interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Kelly took to Twitter to express her disapproval of their presentation, saying M and H pretend that no royal has had it worse in the press than they have. Give me a break, have you ever seen such privileged people wallowing in their own victimhood like this? On the Good Morning Britain TV show, Kelly was even more vocal in her criticism, claiming that Meghan was completely unaware of how her revelations to Oprah would be received and that she made complaints that will be totally unrelatable to 99% of people. Kelly's assessment of the situation came as a shock due to its unusually harsh tone for someone discussing members of Britain's royal family. It seems clear that she refused to cut any slack for the couple despite their high profiles and lofty positions within British society. Number six, Candace Owens. Another American talk show host and political commentator on the hate train is Candace Owens, who also chooses Twitter as her preferred platform for trolling. 
Owen shared her opinion on Meghan and Harry's decision to leave the royal family and move to the US. Isolating an individual away from their family and friends, using life-ending threats to get what you want, these are classic signs of an emotionally harmful relationship, but we are supposed to suspend rationality because racism. She added, Dear Harry, Megan is not the victim, you are. Next up, Lord Alan Sugar. Lord Alan Sugar's comments about the mental health claims made by Meghan Markle during her car crash interview with GB News stirred up quite a controversy. In response to her claims, Lord Alan Sugar argued that if she had been struggling with any mental health issues, it would have been easy for her to get private medical help without anyone else knowing due to the resources available at Buckingham Palace and other places where they live. He suggested that the Queen and other members of the royal family have had many visits from doctors in such confidential settings, which is why he does not believe Meghan's claims. He also added that these visits are very carefully conducted and kept private and confidential. Despite the drama that Lord Alan Sugar's comments sparked, it is important to remember that mental health issues should always be taken seriously and those suffering from them should never be invalidated or dismissed. Mental health support is available for everyone and we should all strive to make sure nobody ever feels alone in their struggles. Taking our number four spot, Chrissy Swan. At the time, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were making headlines around the world following their engagement. While many were captivated by the interracial love story, Australian TV personality Chrissy Swan admitted that she still hasn't warmed up to the American actress. On Facebook, Swan suggested that she is not entirely convinced about the matchup between Prince Harry and his then fiance. Many people seem to agree with Chrissy's controversial position with one commenting, I have reservations too, I'm not sure. She loves the man as much as the role. Another commented, oh my gosh, I totally agree, a bit fake. Next up, Katie Hopkins. British media personality Katie Hopkins has been vocal about her opinions on Meghan. In her first public display of negativity, she bashed Meghan for being Instagram addicted while also dubbing her an American Kate Middleton. She also dubbed her as a low budget princess die with an Oscar winning innocent face. It didn't get better when Prince Harry asked the media to respect his fiance's privacy, to which Katie responded, if Meghan, a woman who acts and does PR for a living, doesn't understand that then, dare I suggest maybe she isn't suitable girlfriend material, let alone a potential bride. Number two, Queen Camilla. Queen consort Camilla had long harbored doubts about Meghan Markle before her marriage to Prince Harry. Author Tom Bauer, who wrote the biography titled Revenge, Meghan, Harry, and the War Between the Windsors, noted that Camilla was unable to give even basic advice to Meghan due to her perceived disrespect. His claims were based on accounts from close members to the royal family. The Queen Consort had reservations about Meghan's ability to sacrifice her independence and career for a life of service in the monarchy. This sentiment was only strengthened when the couple stepped down from their official duties in 2020. As a result, Camilla began referring to Meghan as a minx, alluding to her mischievous making ways and potential for trouble. It is believed that there was mutual animosity between Camilla and Meghan. While Camilla considered Meghan an ambitious self-seeker, Meghan reportedly never liked the Queen concert either. The tense relationship between them ultimately proved too much for either party to handle, leading them both towards a separate path away from each other. And last but not least, at number one, her biggest hater, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan has been particularly vocal regarding Meghan Markle since she entered the royal family and his criticism of her highest level yet when he branded her interview with Ellen DeGeneres as vomit inducing. In his newspaper column, the former Good Morning Britain host expressed his outrage at what he perceived to be an unfair advantage given to Meghan. 
that she gets to benefit from her royal name to amass great wealth while not taking part in any official duties for the monarchy and also publicly accusing the royals of racism with no consequences. Piers Morgan believes that Meghan Markle is able to capitalize on her fame by appearing on talk shows to promote her own personal brand. The drama surrounding this issue continues to make headlines as public opinion remains divided. First up, her ungrateful attitude. Despite Oprah being a major supporter of Harry and Meghan, there have been rumors that Meghan has shown ungrateful behavior towards her. From reportedly declining an invitation from Oprah to failing to thank her for the famous interview, Meghan's alleged attitude may have rubbed Oprah the wrong way. Number 9. The Sussexes Move to America after their royal departure, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle packed their bags and headed straight for California, where Oprah reigns supreme. This move raised eyebrows among the public, with some speculating that Oprah had a hand in encouraging the couple to relocate. While there is no evidence to support this claim, it is possible that Oprah feels responsible for the Sussex's move and may resent them for it. And with these two powerful women suddenly nearby, who knows? Maybe the closeness between the two may have caused friction or competition in their respective fields. Next up, money sins of the past. There have been ongoing rumors circulating about a past financial dispute between Oprah and Duchess Meghan. According to certain sources, it is alleged that Meghan had borrowed a significant sum of money from Oprah in the past, but unfortunately there are claims that she never repaid the debt. This supposed situation has apparently put a strain on their relationship. This supposed situation has apparently put a strain on their relationship. Number 7, weight loss scam allegations. As we all know, Oprah has been the face of one of the biggest weight loss companies in the world. But in 2019, Oprah found herself in some hot water when it was revealed that she had invested $43 million in a weight loss scam involving none other than Meghan's half-sister, Samantha Markle. While Oprah has denied any involvement or knowledge of the scam, one can't help but wonder if it stirred up some spicy tension between her and Meghan. Number 6. The Intention Behind the Oprah Interview The Oprah interview had a lot of mixed feelings behind it and it made everybody collectively look bad. All three had their own agenda for wanting it to go viral, so all the triggers, race, and mental health had to be pressed. Oprah was no longer the star she was, and Meghan and Harry wanted to be catapulted into the A-list category. Trashing Harry's family would hit the headlines for sure. Their version was accepted as fact, with no challenge, no difficult questions, just encouragement to pile it on no acknowledgement of their inconsistencies, and no question as to why Harry had such a difficult relationship with his father Charles, and why they were no longer funding millions to Harry and Meghan. Number 5. The Strained Relationship with King Charles Meghan has been open about her strained relationship with her father-in-law, King Charles. Oprah has been a part of many celebrations involving Queen Elizabeth and other members of the royal family. Interviewing Meghan and Harry may have caused tension between Oprah and the royal family as she had a close relationship with Charles' ex-wife, Princess Diana, and now current wife, Camilla Parker Bowles. Oprah may have felt torn between her loyalty to the family and her friendship with Meghan, leading to a strained relationship between the two women. Next up, the criticism from none other than Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, a British media personality and former friend of Oprah's, has been highly critical of both Meghan and Oprah since the controversial interview aired. He accused Oprah of being self-serving and claimed that she was using Meghan to boost her own fame and fortune. 
Number two, the influence on society. As one of the most influential figures in media, Oprah carries a lot of weight and influence on society. Some may view Meghan and Harry's decision to step down as senior royals and speak out against the royal family as a challenge to traditional institutions. Oprah may have seen this as a threat to her own influence and legacy, causing her to resent Meghan for potentially jeopardizing her reputation and power. Last but not least, at number one, the betrayal of trust. Throughout their friendship, Oprah and Meghan have reportedly grown close and developed a strong bond. So when Meghan decided to do the Netflix docuseries interview without giving Oprah a heads up, it may have felt like a personal betrayal. So when Meghan decided to do the Netflix docuseries without giving Oprah a heads up, it may have felt like a personal betrayal. Oprah is known for valuing trust and loyalty above all else, so this breach of trust could have dealt a significant blow to their relationship. Oprah is known for valuing trust and loyalty above all else, so this breach of trust could have dealt a significant blow to their relationship. Oprah is known for valuing trust and loyalty above all else, so this breach of trust could have dealt a significant blow to their relationship. But you guys let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts and opinions on this topic. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been your host, Shantae, and click that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.